next um, next lecture will be actually a discussion uh, of a very uh, of of a deeper uh, issues uh, in uh, uh, in the discussion what we are doing. So, which relation we have between the title? You, you have seen the title, but the idea is that how information, cognition, agency work uh, to, together uh, uh, to to give the phenomenal, uh, phenomenal experience that we have of intelligent behavior. Uh, Professor um, Gordana Dodik Norbit. I, I hope I pronounced it correctly, sorry for okay. mispronouncing it, I probably do, uh, is from Chalmers University in Gothenburg, and I think uh, we can consider her a philosopher, uh, meaning that I, I, because uh, uh, we are in this era, era of uh, interdisciplinarity and the transdisciplinarity, so maybe she is also a computer scientist, but uh, in this context she is probably uh, playing the role of a philosopher, so she's probably a professional philosopher. So I left uh, leave the floor to Gordana. Thank you, you very start. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabio. Uh, so you have the first slide, uh, which introduces uh, the lecture in this way, in the following way. So you can see the the picture, which presents the morphogenesis. And uh, I will tell you that morphogenesis could be seen as morphological computing. And then at the top of the picture, you will see a robot, which is some kind of insect robot, just to indicate how far we are from insects as natural systems. So Fabio mentioned the octopus, and uh, here I mentioned insects we are far from being able to, to construct things, artificial things, that would be like uh, natural insects or natural, natural animals. So uh, the title of the lecture is Information, Computation, and Cognition, how to connect those things together on different levels of organization or abstraction. So I'm very glad to be part of this course, and I, I'm really pleased uh, to, to, to uh, join the group together with uh, people who uh, for many years inspired my work. So I met the Professor Pfeiffer in 2011, listening to his lecture at, at PTAI conference, and uh, then I had the this uh, short discussion about uh, how much of what is called morphological computing actually is real computing and how to understand it. And then uh, uh, also I think I met Fabio in uh, uh, Thessaloniki in the conference uh, uh, last year, also connected to, to this topic and even uh, Vincent Miller who is uh, lecturing in the course and uh, uh, talking about about uh, uh, natural computing and, and morphological computing. So I can tell you about my, my uh, background. I, okay, I'm from Sweden and I have two affiliations. My old affiliation is to Mellard Allen University and my new affiliation is to Chalmers University of Technology. So, so I'm still connected with uh, uh, my old university with part of my research. And my background professionally in research, I have a, a PhD in physics, so if I want to put myself in, into a box, I would prefer to be a combination between a physicist, and then I have a, a PhD in computer science, so a little bit of computer science as well. But I now really am much more of a philosopher than either physicist or, or uh, computer scientist. But I think there, you, will, you will notice the, the influence of both my uh, phys physicist and my computer scientist background. So I'm teaching in a number of courses which are related somehow to this topic. And also my research is uh, related to both computability and uh, philosophy of computing and philosophy of information, theory of information and information studies. 
So I will tell you that this is really a science in making. This is nothing final, and it is really excitement. Uh, the, the part of it, excitement is that we can contribute to something, to develop something really new, something good and, and promising. So I use this uh, quote of uh, Ilya Prigozhin, who said, I invite readers not on a visit to an archaeological museum, but rather on an adventure in science in making. So this is really an adventure uh, in science in making. So as I, as I connect uh, ideas of information, computation with cognition, I would like to introduce the uh, concept of information. And already in 1993, Claude Shannon, an engineer, uh, uh, has been working and uh, defined the, the mathematical idea or mathematical formulation of, of information concepts in the, in, the, in the context of communication technology. And he already noticed that it is difficult to get one single concept of information. So you can see this uh, Swiss knife in, in the picture, which uh, symbolize all different sorts of uh, applications we have for, for the idea of information, for the concepts of information, and they are used differently in different uh, uh, contexts. So I will go on to tell you that there is a handbook of philosophy of science, which is uh, uh, specifically uh, dedicated to, to uh, theory of information, uh, edited by, by Adrians and Van Bentum. And uh, it is titled Philosophy of Information, but actually there is a lot of science of information and information. Uh, so, so it is very good source of uh, insight into what we know about information today. Some other sources are uh, this time information philosophy uh, from uh, Luciano Floridi, who would like to replace the, the idea of, uh, of uh, material world by the world of information, the world where information is the fabric of the universe for an agent. So we can say we always have, when we build a knowledge, we have always an agent building any type, type of knowledge. So this agent has possibility to interact with the world, get the information from the world, structure this in information, and get knowledge. So the world comes as information to us, and we make knowledge as, as a stru informational structure. So in a way, we can say no, uh, the world for us is informational structure. So it is called informational structural realism. And I have also references here to uh, von Bayer, who, who introduced the idea already in 2004 about information as a new language of science. And it really is uh, uh, used, and, and he is today very active in cubism, which is the, the field of physics, quantum physics, trying to uh, define uh, quantum physics in terms of information. Uh, very exciting uh, basic research. And then we have an idea of information flow. Uh, so, so traditionally, uh, information is considered to be a building block of knowledge, and as knowledge should be true, then the information should be also true. But we can also think about information as a structure or information as, as, uh, as a flow. And uh, those are the books by, by Dretzke and Barweis and Seligman. Uh, talking about information, which is exchange in networks of agents uh, in, in the form of uh, flow, information flow. Another aspect of information, or another important question con connected to information is emergence of new information. So informational dynamics, changes in informational structures, may be uh, ca characterized by the process of self-organization. And uh, there is a book by Wolfgang Hofkirchner, Emergent Information, a Unified Theory of Information, which is uh, uh, giving us an idea that the information generation 
is consisting of cognition or information generation as self-organizing system in the contact with the environment. It, it has uh, this communicative uh, component and the component of cooperation or, or co component of exchange of information. So at different levels of this exchange, some new, uh, uh, completely new emergent information appears. So the, the, the idea of emergency come again into uh, this book, which is called Incomplete Nature uh, by Terence Deacon, where he talks about three different layers of information or three different forms of information. Information one, which, he call, uh, uh, which is Shannon information, uh, containing data patterns and signals, which is important in data communication. Information two, which is Shannon information plus Boltzmann information, which is used to uh, describe intentionality, aboutness, reference, representation, uh, and so on, like is in semantic. And information three, even higher level of information, is a combination between Shannon, Boltzmann, and Darwin. So here we get function, interpretation, use, pragmatic consequences. So we, we can say this is a pragmatic use of information. Uh, Gord Gordana? Yes. Can I just briefly ask a question? I think uh, many of the students will not be familiar with uh, terms like uh, intentionality, aboutness. Uh, could you just, you know, in one or two sentences explain what, what that means? Yeah. It, it, when we talk about the uh, connections between an agent and the world, and especially if it is an intelligent agent like a human, we can say that this intentionality is connection or, or, or it tells us that information is about something in the world. So the agent gets the information, but the information is about whatever it could be in the world. So, so that's uh, uh, the, one, one of the, the main points is that we make a distinction between an agent in the world and the rest of the world that could contain also other agents. So what comes to the agent is something that has to do with the world. That's aboutness of information. So if we go uh, uh, and uh, connect furthermore, uh, the three types of information, uh, they correspond to formative mechanisms like mass energetic, that's a pure uh, uh, lower level physics, which goes to self-organization, which uses this lower level, and goes to self-preservation or semiotic. So you, we need mass energy in the bottom, and then this much mass energy systems, they self-organize, and then they get, under certain conditions, they get uh, self-preservation structures, structures with, uh, the, with, the, with the aim of self-preservation. -preser so we can also uh, see parallels uh, uh, concerning emergent dynamics. We can say that on the bottom we see thermo, uh, uh, and then morpho, and then teleodynamics. Thermodynamics is whatever you find in any system, in any physical system. And morphodynamics is when you get already some sort of form. You get the molecules which have certain preferences, they connect and so on. And then you have teledynamics, for example, if you get uh, already a cell, cell is trying to preserve its structure. It already possess uh, mechanisms to, to uh, avoid uh, problems or dangers or to, to get uh, closer to sources of food and so on and so forth. So, so, so there is already uh, teleological behavior in, in such a living system. Okay, and we can also uh, uh, connect back to Aristotle's causes, uh, like efficient cause, which we find on the basic level of matter, and then the formal cause and the final cause. So it's very interesting that this uh, uh, Deacon's uh, division of information types and the generation uh, steps of uh, information uh, could be uh, uh, connected to different formative me mechanism, 
uh, emergent dynamics, and even to, to uh, classical Aristotle, uh, Aristotelian causes. So we are talking uh, about levels of uh, description or levels of, of abstraction or levels of organization of matter. So starting from the bottom, we can think in terms of physics uh, on elementary particles, atoms, molecules, and so on. You can see the picture uh, until we come to the cells, and there we already have sort of uh, teleodynamics. Cells are trying, acting as actively to preserve themselves. And then tissues, organs, organisms, populations, communities, ecosystems, and so on and so forth. So in terms of uh, information structures, we can say that on the bottom of information hierarchy, there are raw data, just data like, like the signals that come to an agent. And the agent makes some correlations between data uh, based on their own uh, physical structures, and they form this uh, correlated data, which is information. Chunks of information also get correlated uh, by the use uh, by the agent and they build knowledge. And we can s even see on the, on the uh, upper part uh, that the parallel with our pre present day classical computers, we somehow mimic uh, sort of levels of organization even in technology. So even if it, it is not direct in classical computing, there, there are some uh, parallels that we can find. So. Uh, when, when we talk about the world as informational structure, uh, information uh, naturally connects to the complexity of the world. So uh, in a way that uh, a complex system is a system composed of interconnected parts that as a whole exhibit uh, one or more properties that are not typical for the parts themselves. So when we have atoms in, in a gas, Atoms does not have uh, uh, properties of a gas, but the, the whole si system of atoms possess property of a gas. So uh, complex systems as a structure, they are found uh, in between uh, completely ordered systems like a crystal uh, lattice and completely chaotic systems like a gas. So, so complex systems are in between and they have maximum possibility to uh, storage information. So their structures are at the same time information representation. So if you think about uh, lattice, it's very simple structure. Information is very small because you just repeat the same element many times. If you think about chaotic system, then you again have sort of simple law for, for behavior of uh, elementary parts. But complex systems which are in between, they are most interesting and it is, uh, it is not unexpected that living systems are in this regime of complex systems. And to represent complexity, nowadays we have a very good way and that is networks. Uh, the, the theory of networks uh, is, is, uh, is developing very much and uh, a lot of phenomena of today are represented by networks. Uh, and also for, for study of uh, complex systems, we use the idea that we have many simple parts which interact. So they could be parts in the network which exchange information in between. And uh, those uh, models which explain how the whole network uh, grows and how the things go, uh, get self-organized is uh, uh, one of the, the, the very good ways to understand how we get in nature from very simple abiotic systems to biotic systems, living systems, and evolution which leads to humans and uh, as, as today the most uh, uh, well-developed intelligent uh, agents. So, so, so uh, networks are something that, that appears on many levels of organization. In this slide I have complex network, protein network in yeast cells. So it is uh, really on a low level, uh, very complex behavior. You have next picture with human protein interaction network, 
which is also complex system and network structure. And then you can compare to human connectome, how our nerves are connected in the brain. And you can also co compare to social networks where we have humans as agents. So you have different sorts of agents in each of those networks. And anyway, the structure is uh, network structure and we can study what is happening if, if I have some sort of agent, which is very simple agent. A simple agent could be an elementary particle if you wish. And it exchanges other elementary particle particles with other elementary particles. Or it could be an atom or it could be a molecule exchanging atoms or exchanging you, you, you see, and you, it could be neuron as an, as an agent exchanging information with the other neurons in the network. Or it could be a human or a robot in a swarm exchanging information with other robots and building knowledge in this process. So I told you about information and that is a concept that we are uh, learning about uh, these days more and more. And I, I mentioned also that computation, as we know it today, seems to be something more than just symbol manipulation. So in the framework which, which, which I, I will try to present to you, uh, we imagine the whole of nature as computational process. And the, this uh, computation that is going on in nature, it, could be called natural computation. It's called natural computation. And it could be identified as uh, morphological computation. Even though uh, the, the, the word morphological computation is used in robotics for specific purposes, and in other fields could be uh, used for, for different purposes. Uh, anyway, we can see uh, that there is a common framework where you can say that physical system performing changes uh, led by physical laws or other laws on uh, higher levels of abstraction or organization of matter, that those systems could be said to be computing. And in that case, compu computation would be the process going on on informational structure. So if you remember, I told you uh, in, in, uh, in informational structural realism, the whole of the world is informational structure for an agent. So processes going on in these informational structures are uh, computational processes. So this is the, the very broad idea of computation. And we can say that computation is performed on this basic level, if you remember, uh, Terry Deacon's uh, uh, three levels of organization. So on this physical level, on the level of molecules, on the level of uh, living agents. So, so com computation as an information processing is many different sorts of processes on different levels. But all of them have this uh, common feature that informational structures uh, change under exchange of uh, signals or e exchange of information. So you will, you will find uh, in the software engineering uh, pieces of software which could be seen as either controlling system or as a system itself communicating and orchestrating their own behavior uh, with each other as something that reminds this uh, new type of computation. Even though the, 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 the software engineering systems are uh, completely uh, classical uh, uh, implementation in classical in classical computers, but the view that com combines all sorts of information processing into one sort of computation uh, it has this uh, uh, advantage that we can see the world in the same framework. So we can see this. It's it's like uh, uh, we, we can com uh, compare it with with atomism. At the moment when, when we were aware of that the whole of the universe is made of atoms or objects of some sort like elementary particles, we have learned a lot. So, so, so it is, it's a big insight when we understand that computation is this process going on in nature on different levels of abstraction and it has a common behavior. 
So we talk about info-computationalism, that informational structures, they have the dynamics which could be described as computation. Okay? So, so there is quite a lot of things uh, done uh, uh, last uh, 15 years maybe in, uh, in this direction. So you have quite new book. It, it was not from 2102, but from the two zero, uh, 2012. Uh, the, the, the book uh, uh, by... Gordana, uh, where Jenna. you come from? I mean, from which time are you coming, Gordana? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but it's a very, very good book, handbook of uh, uh, natural computing. And natural computing, or computing that appears in nature, is, uh, is, a, is a very broad field. And uh, in the handbook, they, they uh, explain or, or describe it as the field of research that investigates both human design computing inspired by nature and computing taking place in nature. So you'll find the cellular automata, neural computation, evolutionary computation, molecular computation, quantum computation, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I think we could say all of this is actually a morphological computation of one kind or the other. So that was information and computation. Now we have the third uh, concept that I introduced, and that is cognition. And cognition is a process of information dynamics in, in an uh, agent. So for example, at the level of human, we have 100 billions of neurons connected uh, in, into a, a total system. Uh, and those neurons could be seen as agents in a distributed uh, uh, agent system, computational system. So what is cognition? We can say that it is a process of perceiving, reasoning, decision-making, and thinking. And it is a body's and brain's way of processing information to create meaning and make sense for an agent. And there is a third, uh, even more general definition, which says cognition is life itself. And that's Maturana and Varela. Uh, Santiago School of uh, Cognitive Science, who were the first to, to, to say, if you have some living system, it must be cognitive system, because this system must, must take care of itself, reproduce, uh, uh, maintain, uh, feed, and uh, all, all the other pro processes that are uh, necessary for, for life to continue. So in order to be alive, you must have at least some minimum cognition. That's the uh, idea of Maturana and Varela that I find very productive. Because if we want really to construct better robots, which are uh, more uh, energy efficient, which are smoother, which uh, co co uh, connect to natural world in a better way, uh, we should learn from the beginning. So now we are learning about bacteria as cognitive systems. And you would be surprised to learn that bacteria, they vote. They have a, a voting system in, in, in a swarm of bacteria to get to a decision. So it is a distributed cognitive system where one single bacteria is not a very intelligent system, but the, the whole swarm makes a lot of uh, smart moves uh, in order to survive and to avoid uh, harm and so on. Based on uh, pure biological or physical or chemical processes which work in, in, in this case. So that was about cognition on the basic level. And then if we think again back about how us humans, how we uh, perceive the world and how we make sense of the world. Uh, from this picture that I uh, borrowed from Alexei Kurakin, you can see uh, the, the person with the brain, which is a distributed uh, system, uh, information processing system. And in between this uh, person and the world, there is an interface. And we can say that this interface is cognition. Interface is connection between us and the world. 
uh, or, or uh, cognition is the, 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 the mechanism that makes it possible for us to make sense out of the world, out of signals or out of information that we get uh, from the outside world. And it is really uh, agent dependent. So for us as humans, we see uh, much more complex phenomena in the world because our cognition is based both on uh, symbol uh, manipulation but also on uh, many other mechanisms uh, which, which are specific for uh, highly developed intelligent organisms. But if you look at the, uh, this uh, C. elegans uh, uh, worm, which is quite simple organism, what could this uh, organism have for a cognition and what could its uh, picture of the world uh, uh, be in, in this connection? It must be something which is quite automatic, which comes from molecules, it could sense only molecules. It, it's completely sure that if you, if you show this uh, warm uh, piece of uh, text, it will not uh, react uh, in any way. So, so the world, the cognition of a uh, very simple organism is uh, dependent on whatever sensors and actuators they have, whatever sorts of body they developed. So you see very clearly that uh, body is uh, uh, determining uh, cogn cognition. And we can compare with technolo technological applications. So cognitive network technology, you can see here, uh, uh, you, you, we have a, uh, an agent which learns, or okay, we, we can start, start with observation, it observes, uh, orients itself, decides, acts, learns, and go in, in those loops uh, which, which uh, help it to, to, to increase knowledge and uh, to adapt to the environment. And the, how does nature compute? We say that the nature is a computational system, computational network, how does it compute? We can say it goes through self-organization processes and through evolution in a biological world, which goes through uh, autopoiesis. And autopoiesis is a process which is process of life. It is the Maturana and Varela's way to, to describe uh, this uh, connection between bottom-up processes which go through self-organization and top-down which is organized in, in a living organism and it is a control system which controls all, all the rest. So uh, there, there was this uh, very old discussion about if uh, uh, if evolution really only uh, relies on, 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 uh, on pure chance and then selection. Uh, it, it is so improbable process that it would never lead to something like, like, uh, uh, like a human intelligence. And then the, the, the argument that it would be like uh, apes uh, typing Shakespeare on, on, on the typewriter. But actually, with this uh, self-organization and autopoiesis, we can say that uh, this, uh, this monkey is not typing the, 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 the uh, Shakespeare himself uh, uh, letter by letter, but if, if, if there is a program in, in not, if, if uh, the monkey is typing not in, in the typewriter, but, but in a computer with already uh, a program which could start something uh, bigger chunks of, of information, then, and that corresponds to self-organization and autopoiesis, then the process is not at all so improbable. So, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the ambition is to try to understand cognition in terms of information processes, and this is called naturalized knowledge or naturalized epistemology, because in philosophy, epistemology is what is about knowledge, uh, theory of knowledge. So we'll, we try to uh, uh, study knowledge as a natural phenomenon, and we mean by knowledge also not only uh, uh, definitions or, or, or uh, um, explicit uh, uh, statements, but also knowledge about uh, how to do something, knowledge what, and 
uh, to, the, to the difference from knowledge that something is. So all sorts of knowledge could be studied as natural phenomena, as embodied uh, natural phenomena. So we are trying to understand uh, how this process of knowledge creation in an agent, and again, knowledge is to know both how and what. Uh, this, uh, we are interested in how, how this uh, goes on, and we use info computational uh, framework for this uh, understanding of knowledge production. So we can say we go from, from data to information to knowledge in different steps of uh, information structuring or computation. In the, in the brain, we know uh, that uh, learning goes through the process of Hebian, uh, uh, Hebian learning. It means that the things that we do many times connect neurons many times, and those neurons which uh, fire together, they wire together as well. Uh, that's like with muscles. So if you, if you exercise muscles many times, you get stronger muscles. That's uh, the same process, similar process that goes on in, in both our brains and also in, in, in the uh, uh, morphology of organisms, different sorts of organisms. Repeating different solutions will get those solutions more probable in the system. So we are trying to understand cognition in all sorts of living organisms as a process of computing or morphological computing. We can also say that this cognition is restructuring in an agent. So structures in, a, in an agent are changing in the process of cognition, both through uh, uh, memory, uh, we, we, we acquire memories from our interactions with the world, and those memories could be in our brains or in our bodies. Uh, embodied memories are also something uh, which we can find in, in uh, different uh, simpler sorts of organisms. Now we have this question about uh, symbolic and sub-symbolic uh, computing that we uh, uh, met in the first pre student presentation and how they connect with each other. So, so uh, we can say that symbolic simulation has two stage uh, pro process. First, the mapping on inference structure to the theory onto hardware states, which defines symbolic computation. And second, the mapping on inference structure of the theory into hardware states, which under appropriate conditions, qualified the process as a symbolic, symbolic uh, simulation. While if we have analog simulation, in contrast, uh, it is defined by a single mapping from causal relations about element, about among elements uh, of the simulation to causal relations um, among elements of the simulation, simulated uh, phenomenon. So we can say uh, that this picture uh, that uh, Douglas Hofstadter had in the uh, Gödel Escher, Escher Bach uh, book, uh, that uh, this holism is made of uh, of uh, reductionism, or or the the, the sub-symbolic parts of our cognition are support, are the basic parts which build, which, which provide possibility for symbolic uh, layer in, in uh, information processing in, in human agents. So, so we need both lower level processes, processes which both through morphology and uh, through uh, nerve control and everything, subconscious uh, control our behavior and also what is controlled by, by the conscious process which has a small part of our cognitive activity. Okay, and uh, it, when we talk about uh, levels of organization or levels of abstraction, that uh, this computation as information self-structuring self comes into different layers, we can see it today in models of a brain. For example, Henry Macram, who is the leader of the Human Brain Project, uh, he initiated this uh, big, uh, huge uh, flagship uh, project 
where uh, the, the, the brain is studied in, on different uh, levels of organization. So there is a, a molecular level, you can see on this picture, on, on the uh, upper part of uh, the picture they're constructing the brain. So you, you start with the uh, molecular level and then go to cell, cellular and to uh, circuits and to regions in the brain and the whole brain. Uh, simulation. So that's the plan to, to be able to step by step uh, uh, simulate the whole brain. There is a lot of uh, research going on right now on studying the brain and it is very, very important for us to really understand how those physical and chemical and uh, neural processes go on in the brain in order to be able to better understand how to construct machines which would be more intelligent than those we have today. So this infocomputationalism in a shell would be uh, that nature can be described as a complex information structure for a cognizing agent. Computation is information dynamics or information processing and computation is constrained and governed by the laws of physics on the fundamental level of morphology and then we can say that on the, each uh, next emergent level, it follows the laws of the level. So we, we have been mentioning morphological or morphogenetic computing several times and uh, here I comment on how we go from raw data to semantic information. And interestingly, Turing, who, who is considered the father of uh, classical computation, uh, he proposed, he was among the first to propose uh, something that could be called natural computing and it, it was the fusion reaction model of morphogenesis. So he was explaining the development of biological patterns like spots and stri uh, stripes in the animal skin. And uh, morphogenesis could be seen as process of morphological computing. It is a physical process so uh, even though it is not uh, computation is in, in a traditional sense, it presents uh, uh, the result of the interplay between the informational structure and the computational process. Information self-structuring and information integration, both synchronic and diachronic, going on in different time and space scales in physical bodies. And there is very interesting uh, Japanese project on, on uh, modeling uh, uh, a whole brain as, as a set of oscillators. I, I have it in, 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 uh, in the reference list. Uh, so, so this time behavior is also very important. I very many times uh, emphasize the, the scales, different scales of organization, but time, time dependence is also very uh, crucial for, for cognition. So infocomputational naturalism describes nature as informational structure and morphological computing on that structure leads to new informational structures via processes of self-organization. And evolution itself is a good example of this kind of natural computation. So we can say uh, that morphological computation connects body and that body could be human body but any other brain and that could be a, a brain of a, of a robot or brain of a, of a very simple uh, organism and environment whatever it must, could be. So we have examples, uh, we, we have been uh, listening to Fabio's uh, lecture on soft robotics and there are many other connected things like self-assembly systems and so on. Uh, especially interesting on nano level and uh, intelligent matter and uh, uh, such things that are developing right now. Uh, so, so we are learning a lot these days about how to construct systems which would be able to self-assemble, to behave in certain ways that, that we would prefer. And now uh, I can tell you that this theory of infocomputationalism has got a mathematical implementation because we always in science try to, to get some mathematical formulations. That's, that's uh, uh, also what Fabio mentioned in his uh, article from the book. 
that, that is what we are missing, uh, really exact mathematical formulations for this. And uh, this is an article from Constructivist Foundations where Andre Eresman uh, made the made uh, mathematical formulation for infocomputational framework. So, so uh, there is a link to, to her article and more details if you would like to see how, how she implements this, this framework mathematically into dynamic category theory in the framework of, of this theory. So I can tell you the short uh, summary of the argument. Information constitutes a structure, structure consisting of differences in one system that cause the differences in another system. So if you take uh, information as, as uh, uh, the, the, the fabric of the universe, for an agent to get information, the first step is to, to observe a difference in the world. So if you just get a black uh, uh, field, if you, if you look through the telescope and you just see black, there, there is not much information for you if you are an astronomer searching for, for a star. So the first uh, spot that you, that you find is the first information for you that makes a difference to the background of, 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 uh, of black. So you see the first difference. And then if you observe the next spot, you make the next difference and you make relationships between those differences. So basically re uh, relationships are very important and in information is a relation, re relational uh, concept. And computation is information processing, as I mentioned uh, before. And this is the summary of, uh, of what I already told you. And of all agents, entity is capable of acting on their own behalf. So agent could be anything that is able to act on their own behalf. It need not be a human. Uh, only living agents have the ability to uh, actively make choices, so to increase the probability of their own continued continuing existence. So cognition consists of all infocomputational processes necessary for existence, and cognition is infocomputation. Cognition is equivalent with the process of life. That is just summary of, of what I told you. And the conclusion is that we bring new definitions of many, many uh, terms. For example, information. Difference that makes a difference for an agent. That's uh, 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 the structure. So you can say it is, it is a generalization of the idea of information as a message or information as a, uh, whatever you read in the newspaper or information on the TV and so on and so forth. So we are trying to, to put the very, very general idea of information as a basis. So information as a structure, as a structure of the whole physical universe. Then computation. Uh, is information dynamics. That's also a broader definition than Turing machine. And uh, it, it is, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, morphological computing or natural computing. And cog cognition is defined as life. So it, it is also much broader than, than what typically people think about cognition. When they say cognition, they usually think of, of human cognition. So, and those are studied at different levels of organization, abstract, abstraction, granularity, which is spatial scale, and at different time scales, taken synchronously and diachronically or asynchronously. And uh, topics of importance for the development of new understanding of cognition as a computational process uh, and its evolution in the physical world. We use this natural computation and interactivity as an as a, uh, important mechanism. So we have, of course, a lot of uh, open questions. This is uh, just a little part of, of it. We would like to learn how, how this process really goes on in physical world. And uh, self-organization of information in physical agents on different scales. Even the, the question of metamorphogenesis uh, is very, very interesting and attractive. That is morphogenesis of morphogenesis. And abiogenesis, how, how the life uh, started on Earth from, from non-living organisms. Of course, the robotic applications on different levels from nanorobots to, to uh, macroscopic scale. 
and other nanotechnology applications. And we need the details in order to really understand. And uh, I, I, mention, I, I, ha I have noticed that in, in the book uh, uh, found in, in the web page of the course, there are several articles which already uh, head towards more details, filling in this uh, framework with, with the essential content, like understanding the behavior of swarms of bacteria and so on. So it's really uh, exciting and, and good development. So I will uh, finish uh, with the, with the, with the uh, quote uh, by Rosenberg uh, and Kari, which says, our task is nothing less than to discover a new broader notion of computation. And I would say that that's morphological computation. And to understand the world around us in terms of information processing. So we have a lot of things to do, a lot of work. Here is a list of, of books that I can uh, warmly recommend. And uh, uh, the, the one uh, which is called A Computable Universe, uh, Understanding and Exploring Nature as Computation, edited by Hector Senil. Uh, there, is, there are several special uh, journal issues uh, uh, dedicated to both uh, physics and information, natural and un unconventional computing, and information and energy matter, how they connect. There are books on computation information cognition, connection between information and computation, and the last, uh, uh, last year, 2013, uh, the book Computing Nature, with a lot of really uh, leading uh, scientists and philosophers con co uh, contributing. Uh, two very new books, probably approximately correct, by Leslie Valiant, uh, who, who points uh, very clearly that uh, organisms are solving problems just probably and just approximately correct, not uh, totally and absolutely correct. So. The, the way uh, natural computing works is uh, this probably approximately correct. It's not, it's not like a Turing machine, uh, totally reproducible and always the same. And then another book written by a philosopher, uh, Physical Computation and Cognitive Science, uh, by Fais who, who studies exactly this uh, field of, of connections between uh, physics and co cognition. And of course, at the bottom is uh, this new kind of science, the change of, of, of paradigm, uh, going from idea that complexity is something so complex that you cannot uh, possibly tackle it, uh, to the idea that complexity, complexity can arise from very, very simple systems with simple rules, but very many agents and distributed system. A very good uh, a book that you can find on the web, free. free. So I, I really strongly recommend this. Uh, there is also an important book on interactive computing, a new paradigm of computation, because we are always talking about interaction between an agent and the, the rest of the world. Uh, and the remarkable book, Self-Modifying Systems in Biology and Cognitive Science, an old book which was in a way prophetic about natural computing and uh, uh, morphological computing. Then there is a book uh, by Seth Lloyd on, about the universe as quantum information, and a book by Vladko Vedral uh, uh, titled The Coding Reality. Again, the physicist who uh, takes the universe to be informational system on the, ba on the, on the level of, of quantum computing. And we have uh, The Origins of Order by Stuart Kaufman as a book which, uh, which really in a, in a good way uh, points out that uh, self-organization is, is really something important. And the emergence uh, as a process is very important. So, so not only the, 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 the random processes and selection, but also self-organization and uh, even uh, autopoiesis are central for uh, for development of, of uh, organisms and evolution. And now to connect uh, to, to our course, uh, uh, I read this book with, uh, with a big pleasure and found a lot of new things. Uh, and I see that uh, things are development, developing and moving forward. So it was really 
good, and I, I think that I, I see the, the relationships between uh, the readings of the book, uh, of, of the course uh, in, uh, in the book, uh, How the Body Shapes the Way We Think, uh, because you have got the, the readings for today were uh, chapter six about evolution and cognition from the scratch, and I think uh, it, it could be connected also to the next chapter, which is collective intelligence, cognition from interaction. So, and this is uh, the, the list of articles uh, that are uh, basis for this, uh, this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we, we may have uh, many questions. Who is the first? Can, can I? Can I? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Well, well, thank you, Gordana, for a beautiful and very inspiring uh, lecture. I have a, f a few points. Uh, the first one is, did you write a book that summarizes these ideas? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> well, I think I would, I, would, I would, you know, put me, put me on the pre-order list. Oh, thank uh, you. The second point is, you already alluded to that. In, section, in the book, How the Body Shapes the Way We Think, in the chapter on evolution, point 6.8, on page 204, the title, subtitle is Self-Organization, the Powerful Ally of Mutation and Selection. So it's basically what you mentioned, the constraining facts of self-organization, uh, you know, based on physical processes. I mean, that was it's just a, a pointer also maybe for the students that they can read this up maybe in uh, chapter six. And now I have an example that I, I got from John Hopfield, and I'm interested in what you think about it. So he said, if we have a, a uh, microprocessor, that's a physical dynamical system. I mean, it's a physical thing, so it's a dynamical system. Now, so basically it's just dynamics that's happening. Now, the when we program, so his idea was when we program the microprocessor, that's the digital or symbolic world. And with the digital symbolic world, world when we program it, we set the dynamics for the physical system. So basically we set the dynamics and then we just let it run. So his idea, if I interpret this correctly, was that this is basically so we have one system and the digital view or symbolic view and the dynamic view are just two sides of the same coin. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there, there is a quote now, I don't have it with me, but uh, there is a quote of uh, Ray Kurzweil where he analyzes what happens with the sound from, from the, uh, the, the uh, moment I talk to the moment you hear it. There are many transformations of sound which are from continuum to digital, from digital to continuum, and, and on and on and on in several steps. So it, it is constraints that make it digital from continuum, I would say. So you put the constraints on, the, on your continuum and get digital packets out of it somehow. And then you get the transformation, getting those uh, uh, to, to, to a continuum and so on and so forth. So there are physical mechanisms that, that could uh, manage this transformation from the one regime to the other. So, uh, I, um, I guess if there are other questions. Yeah. So, I, I have a, a question about, uh, I remember uh, your uh, slide on the C elegance. No? Yeah. I don't know if you can go back because I think it's very interesting. Like, most <laughs> or all of your slides, actually. Yeah. yeah. This one. Uh, so uh, I, I think it, it, it makes a lot of sense the fact that you say, in this case, we know the structure. I mean, it, it's not like the Human Brain Project. The, the 
see elegance brain project has been solved mm -hmm. many years ago, right? In terms of uh, uh, determining the connectome, the connectome of the C elegance is known. So when uh, when trying to understand, uh, I don't know how. I mean, if we study the, uh, what do you think about uh, the kind of model we should develop of this kind uh, of a brain or of a, for the brain organization of the C elegance? Meaning, should we it include uh, the physics? Of a of a C elegance, uh, I mean, because uh, when we talk about uh, practically, you not know, of info computation or morphological computation, means that okay, I will have some kind of computing of information processing inside the C elegance brain, these 302 neurons, and then I will have uh, the the, morpholo the morphological computing in the interaction of the body of the C elegance with the terrain, right? So how do you think about what in concrete? So the info computationalism of the C elegance. It's a very interesting question. I, I, I wish I knew more about C elegance and about uh, info computationalism, but I, I guess we could uh, have different sorts of models of different levels of uh, granularity. So it depends on what would you like to do with this. Would you like to construct a, a physical model of this organism? Or would you just like to have a simulation? Simulation can, we can have on different levels of uh, granularity. I think no, it, it entirely depends on, on the application. No, because, what no, is it you would like us to No, because uh, you, I was uh, practically trying to think uh, to the reverse engineering of the C. elegans brain. No? So, uh, could be something feasible because of, I mean 300 neurons already give uh, uh, rise to a, a large uh, so it's already complicated the 300 neurons but uh, it's a manageable number and then also the physics uh, of the um, of the C elegance uh, it's still very complicated but uh, again it's not uh, not even an end, so it's a, apparently a, system, a simple system. At this point, uh, if you had to describe, in pre no, I, my question was in terms of principles. So if uh, you wanted to describe the C elegance work living in the world, so probably which percentage of the information, of the computation will be managed by the neurons? Uh, so it's a stupid, it's a, it's a rough question, a rough cut question. So I have this C elegance with a body living in an environment. In your view, which, kind, which percentage of the information processing I should expect to find into the brain? Which percentage is, is around, so around in the world? Because I would say 10% in the brain, but uh, just you understand what I mean? Uh, n not quite sure. If, if you would like to, to somehow relate what is going on in the body of uh, C. elegans connected uh, or in, in, uh, in, in relation to what is around in the world, in the environment of C. elegans, what, sh what it can perceive, what it can pro pro uh, process or... So if we know, we, we know the, the sensors, we know the actuators, we know the processes which might be going on there? Or uh, what no, would be the problem? Uh, I, I do another example. Now, if you think to a passive worker, a, a really, not the, a really not actuated, going down um, a slope, um, you, you know the, the, the answer. The answer is 100% in the body and the, environment and the slope. 0% mm -hmm. in the brain because there is no brain. So mm -hmm. the C elegance might be sort of that. Now maybe not 0% because uh, if there are 300 neurons probably some, something is happening in the brain. But mm -hmm. it might, still might have a lot of the computation which is not uh, uh, computation in the traditional uh, if you want vanilla sense, but it's the computation performed by the dyna physical dynamics of the agent yeah. interaction in inter, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I would uh, uh, start with uh, the simplest possible organisms like bacteria and uh, proceed to more and more complex ones because if you want to understand biology really you have to go through evolution, evolutionary steps. So we don't know really on the level of a cell how this thing works. So the uh, elegance is already too ambitious. <laughs> I, I, that, 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 that's my feeling, but of course you, you, can, use, you can use this passive walker if you have uh, uh, good enough chunks to, to, uh, to encapsulate and use them for, uh, for, for movement, if it is movement you are interested in. So you could be interested in many things uh, depending on what's happening in, in the brain of this animal, which kind of processes are, are there how much of control is in the brain. I think it's, it's I, I don't know much of, about uh, uh, C. elegans, but to start with a very simple organism would be easier. Uh, perhaps, or we find some good elements that, that we can identify li like in Pussy Walker. It's really a question of, of experiment. I, I know, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I don't know if we have, we are a bit uh, really out of time uh, as we tend to do. Uh, I don't know if there are other questions. If there are not, uh, I, I think that uh, Gordana will be happy to answer to offline questions if you are too shy Absolutely. or too tired or too tired to, to raise questions now. And so uh, I thank again the uh, speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think uh, I thank also all the attendees and